Hello coders, I hope you are coding well. In the previous video, we created update employee page with the form and after this we called get employee by id api and we displayed the employee data in the form. And in today's video, we will create update employee api in our Spring Boot application. So let's get started. So we will create the update employee method in the employee service first. So let's open the class and after the get employee by id method, we will start writing a new method and this method will return employee and we will name this method as update employee and after this in the params, we need to accept the id and employee. So we will mention long id and after this we will mention employee and we will name this as employee and in the body of this method first of all we need to get the employee by the id from the db so we will create one optional variable of employee and we will name this as optional employee and after this we will use employee repository and we will call find by id method and in the params we will pass the employee id and after this we need to check the existence of our optional employee so we will write if condition and here we will use optional employee and we will call is present method and if it is not true then we will write a return statement and we will return null from this method and in the block of if condition we will create new employee object and we will name this as existing employee and we will set the value in it by calling optional employee dot get method and after this in this existing employee we need to update the data and first of all we will update the email so we will call existing employee dot set email method and in the params we need to pass the updated email which we can get by calling employee dot get email and as you know this employee is coming from the parameters and after the email we need to set the name so we will call existing employee dot set name method and in the params we will pass employee dot get name and after the name we need to set the phone so we will call existing employee dot set phone method and in this we will send employee dot get phone and after the phone we will set the department so we will call existing employee dot set department method and in this we will pass employee dot get department and after setting the data in the existing employee we need to save it in the db so we will write a return statement here and we will use employee repository and we will call save method and in the params we will pass existing employee and with this our update employee method is completed in the employee service. Now let's open the employee controller to write the endpoint. And after the get employee by id method we will start a new method. And this method will return response entity. And we can name this method as update employee. And in the params we need to accept the id and the employee. So we will mention at the rate path variable annotation. Because we will get the id from the path and the data type of this will be long and we will name this as id and after this we need to mention the employee which we will get in the request body so we will mention at the rate request body annotation and after this we need to mention employee and we will name this as employee and in the body of this method we will create a new object of employee and we will name this as updated employee and after this we will use employee service and we will call update employee method and in the params we will pass id and employee and after this we need to check our updated employee and we need to return the response and to do that we will write if condition and in this we will use updated employee and we will check it with null and if it is true then we will write a return statement and we will return response entity and to set the status we will call status method and here we will return http status dot bad request and after this we will call build method and if our updated employee is not true then in the else case we will write a return statement and we will return response entity dot ok and in the body we will send updated employee and after this we will mention at the rate patch mapping annotation on this method 
and for the URL we will set it as slash employee slash ID and with this our update employee API is completed now let's run our application and as you can see our application is up without any errors now let's go to the postman and let's call this update employee API from there and in the postman from the request types we need to select patch and after this we need to give the basic URL which is http localhost 8080 and after this we need to mention the endpoint URL which is slash API slash employee and after this we need to pass the ID which we can give as 6 and after this we need to open the body tab and in this we will select raw and then json and in the request body first of all we need to pass the name so let's mention here the name and after the name we will pass email and after email we will pass phone number and at the end we will pass department now i will fill the data in these fields now in the mysql workbench let's open our employee table and as you can see currently we have two employees and let's say we want to update the name of the employee 4 which has id 6 and in the postman as you can see i gave the id 6 and after this in the request body i use the same details for department phone number and email but i change the name to update name now let's click on this send button and as you can see we got the response 200 ok and in the updated employee we have the name got updated now let's go to the workbench and let's verify the change and in the workbench let's click on this icon to refresh the data and as you can see now for the id6 we have the name as update name now let's go back to the postman and in the postman let's keep the employee id as 66 which is not available in the db and let's click on this send button and as you can see we got an error response which is 400 bad request so our update employee api is working completely fine and that's it for this video in the next video we will call this api from our react application